If you own a property and have a second mortgage on it, and if you want to keep this property and get rid of the second loan, attorney Shaw Perali can help. Call 510-742-5887. Due to the uncertain economy, many people have settled their debts for a fraction of its value. It's recommended to use an experienced lawyer to deal with it. Shaw Perali is an experienced debt settlement attorney and has handled hundreds of such cases successfully. There are no upfront fees for debt settlement. Only when you win, you pay. Call Shaw Perali, attorney at law, at 510-742-5887 or visit yourdebtsettlementattorney.com for a free assessment. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is established by this ad. The law does not guarantee success. Call 510-742-5887. Beerables Inc. is an e-solutions company that provides custom web design, web application development, and internet marketing services to individuals and businesses. They can build powerful e-commerce sites, mobile apps, develop content, and market you on social media. They can help manage your brand's reputation and provide rock-solid customer support. Call today at 1-800-651-6091 or email us at info at beerbowls.com for a free consultation today. Again, the number is 1-800-651-6091. And now, from the San Francisco Bay Area Studios, KLOK proudly presents to you the prominent attorney Shaw Perelli for the Shaw Perelli Law Show. Coming at you with over 50,000 watts of power. The Shaw Pirelli Law Show, where all your views matter. Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum, sister Khan. Namaskar to all the listeners. This is attorney Shah Pirelli for the Shah Pirelli Law Show. And uh, we are going to discuss about immigration, of course, and I have today with me on the board, Franco, and thank you, Franco, for being here. And, of course, anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we were going to talk, of course, about immigration with all the issues related to immigration, but we will also talk about debt settlement in a few. The lines are are open, 408-912-5565, 408-912-5565. Just to let you know, we are um, uh, we already have some callers, so I'll take the callers, Franco, and then we will talk about H1B because this is H1B season. This is Shaparal. You're live on air. Hello. 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 Yes. Hi. You're live on air. Hi. Hello. Uh, please speak. Is it? Is yeah. It, go ahead. Is it Shaparal? Show. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. You're on the uh, air. Hi. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. My question is regarding the H1B. Uh, is this the time to talk or uh, should I call later? No, no, no. You can talk, but you're live, right? Okay. So you're on air. <laughs> Go ahead. You're on the radio right now. Okay. Okay. So uh, my question is, uh, I I have my uh, amendment uh, filed in 2016 and I got the approval in uh, end of December but the approval date was till August 31st 2017 and it has I-94 also uh, till um, August uh, end of August so my question is uh, is am I am I eligible to stay in US and work or is it out of status and I'm planning to travel uh, to India for a vacation next week. And can I travel and be back after my vacation? Okay. So you got an extension. It expires in 2017, August? No, it, it's an and amendment. It's just a location transfer. So an mm-hmm. amendment has been raised for the new location. And that amendment, uh, there were uh, two times RFE on the same amendment. And I got the approval in the last year, December. But the approval date was still only till August 31st. Of 2017? Course, and, uh, approval, H1. You got it 2017 only or 2018? What are we talking about here? Yeah, 2017. But uh, as per my port of entry, my rent for is valid till this year, August. 
and my visa is valid till 2018 august but the oh, amendment man. approval notice was given only till 2017 uh. august okay so technically the unless you go back to the position where you were before the amendment then the amendment controls that means technically you will be out of status if we don't we, i have to look at the paperwork to tell you exactly so i will recommend you give me a call but if the way it works with sure. amendment so so if the amendment completes in 2017 and then after the amendment um after that timing you went back to the original i94 which is a previous uh you're fine but if not then you might have a problem so I recommend you give us a call 5107425887 let me look at it and then I'll tell you if um, what needs to be done because you might have sure, been accused on lawful presence Okay and okay. my employer has filed a new amendment immediately once he we got the notice so in Jan he has filed the amendment and extension Okay it's in processing now So Okay will that so be that, valid that should then? be that As should be uh, yeah started? that should be okay but it's very tricky because the problem is like um is the problem is that at this point what you're facing is that if uh, there was a mistake or some kind of other problems it might not have uh, uh by the time you file the second one you might have lapsed and they might not approve the amendment as an I94 approve approval that means you might have to leave the country come back to get a 994 so it's a little bit tricky but at this point what he did is the right thing but uh if you're traveling to india that's what i'm saying it's going to be too long for me to explain because this is very complicated and it can really give you a hard time you need to do it properly so give me a call and then we'll talk to a consultation okay okay sure yeah, okay okay good luck to you let me take another caller this is shapra you live in here hello hello yeah hi hi you're live go ahead uh yeah uh, let me explain my case uh, recently yes, you know in october 2017 i filed my h4 from f1 mm -hmm. so uh, my wife's uh, h1 uh, is valid that time till until uh, december 31st 2017 mm -hmm. my file uh, denied in february 12 2018 and i already uh, submitted an extension you know as my wife uh, filed extension in december so uh do i need to uh go back to india and process for consular processing for my next petition or can i stay back here on my uh um, h4 petition now okay so you filed an h4 petition before your f1 got expired right yeah and then what happened you got denied that's what you mean Yeah, it got denied in February 12, 2018. And at that time was it, your F1 still good or the F1 was gone? Uh I'm not maintaining my F1 status. Uh I discontinued then my if I, college. Yeah. Uh, so there's a chance you might have to leave the country and come back on H4. But it's a little bit tricky because you might be the same situation as the previous caller. There might be a lapse in your time in your I94. So um and also we need to know if you overstay more than 180 days then it will be a bigger problem so you need you might have to leave the country and come back to get your h4 because the h4 that you file is not a timely h4 because you you at this point the f1 is gone the first one was 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 filed probably why was the first one denied in the first place what was the reason uh, because issue? because my uh primary as uh, spouse h1 got expired in december 31st 2017 ah okay 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 now i got it okay sorry because i, I was what i was listening more to the date so i didn't just hear that part but okay while well, there is a chance they won't give you um an extension of h4 your best chance your wife now has a good h1 right yes yeah you might have to go outside maybe you can even go to mexico or no. ca canada no, no. hello my my wife filed extension in december that time i filed my h42 so still my uh, wife's h1 is under process okay but at that time when you file the h1 and the h4 oh, your f1 was already gone you didn't maintain it right yes okay well at this point you don't have much of a choice you have to wait but um i'm 
unless you are lucky, it will, will probably be denied because you were out of status and it doesn't merge. However, having said that, as soon as your H1 for your wife gets approved, you can just leave the country and come back. What I would recommend is to have your wife's case go under premium um, so that your case goes fast because if they don't consider the original application of the H4 to be timely filed, they can say that you accrued unlawful presence, which makes it have more than 180 days of it. So you need to be just be careful on that one. So I would recommend first to to upgrade your wife's case to premium so that we know what happens on yours. Then the next step, if, if they approve yours, you're fine. If not, then you might have to leave the country and come back to get your H4. Okay? Uh, but we can wait for 15 more days, right, after the rejection notice. Is that correct? Or do we have any grace period for that? No, you don't have a grace period. But um, what happens is that as long as you don't pass 180 days, technically you're okay. But... The 180 days is not a grace period. It's uh, kind of a forgiven time. So it's very tricky. Um, right now you're okay because it's pending. But once you get an answer, you need to leave uh, before 180 days from that date of the, if there's a denial. But there's a chance there will be a denial because there's nothing to hold on to to do change of status for you. But the, the good news is that since it's, it's as long as your wife has an H1 approved, you should be fine on your side, okay? Or if it is a little bit confusing, just give me a call. We'll do a consultation and we'll assess your case before you do anything. But at this point, the only thing you can do is wait. Uh, only thing I will recommend is to put the case under premium for your wife. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good luck to you. You're welcome. So, ladies and gentlemen, we had two callers very early as soon as we started. So, the number to call to the to the studio today is 408 um nine one two five five six five four zero eight nine one two five five six five and the number to our office five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven and then the website is piralilaw dot com or attorneyonair.com. I apologize this week has been really hectic. Many people have been calling and they have not reached us. We had a power shortage in the building and it kind of burned our entire system. It took us some time to fix it. And I really apologize for that. And at the same time, unfortunately, well, for good news for my team, uh, some, team so, some, they, we had some, some, some people who were not well, so it kind of slowed down a little bit. But we're back on track. As from Monday, we'll be back on track. So I apologize for that. So let me take another caller, Franco. This is Shop Ray. You're live in here. Hi. Uh, I'm actually a U.S. Hi. citizen trying to apply for a green card for my wife. So, mm -hmm. how long did he generally take and uh, whether can she visit India when that's happening? Uh, when till, I mean, during the time, processing time. Okay, so, you, you where's your wife? Where is she? In the U.S. now. She's in the U.S. On what visa? Uh, H1, sorry. She's on H1, so you're filing. Well, technically she can she can visit and come back on H1, but I don't recommend it. I would recommend to, if you file for her case, file also for an advance parole. And then once the advance parole gets approved, then she can travel. Or once the, the green card gets approved, so whichever comes first. But she cannot go on H1 to India for a, more than a month or something, right? She can go, but it's not recommended. Okay. Because she can travel on the H1, except okay. I don't recommend doing it because there are a lot of complications that can come up later. Okay. So even if she was in India, uh, if she quits her H1 and goes to India, still I can apply for her green card, right? But it's a more complication, you think? Yeah, then the case would be different. Right now what you're applying is under adjustment of status. If you apply in India, it will be processing through the National Visa Center, which is a totally different ball game. Okay. So there will be time uh, delay for that, right? There will be more delay in that case and adjustment yes, of status. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, Thank you. I will recommend not doing that. Okay. Good luck to you. Let me take another caller. This is Shah Rai. You're live in here. Hi, uh, thank you, Shah, for taking my call. I have two questions. You're welcome. Uh, uh -huh. My first question is, uh, my I have applied for my wife's uh, naturalization application last mm -hmm. November, 
and I currently see that it's taking about uh, 10 months to one year uh, to complete the whole process. Is that a, the correct estimate? It depends where you are, but yes, it is taking around that time. Where are you located? I'm from Fremont. Okay, uh, you're from Fremont, so your case probably is going to be in San Francisco. The answer is yeah. The answer is yes. Uh, it, w it takes around ten months to to get processed. Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, sorry, I draw uh, some of the. I the said, I said it is taking it? between it is taking between eight to ten months to get processed. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. I have one more question. So I'm pl uh, we're planning on applying uh, green card for my wife's mom once she once my wife gets her naturalization thing completed. Mm -hmm. So I understand that uh, we need to provide birth certificate to show that proof of relationship. So we don't have birth mm -hmm. certificate for now. So what are the alternatives okay. for that? You need to get what we call an affidavit of birth. But before that, you need to get what we call a non-availability of birth certificate. And unfortunately, now some places, or fortunately, some places you go, they will give you what we call a late birth certificate or a non-availability certificate. Once you get that, then you still need the affidavit, no matter what, because even you get a late birth certificate, it's as if no birth certificate. So it's a, you need to get that, and you have to put other proof. It's kind of hard for me in the in that one minute to tell you, but... There are other stuff that you have to put, like ration cards, medical records to prove the the birthday. But yeah, the yeah. most important part, you first need to get the the non-availability. That means there was no birth certificate or late birth certificate. Then you put affidavit, etc., etc., to prove the base. We get that all the time for India. And if you need help, just give. We'll we'll guide you. Okay. Five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. But yeah, that's yeah. the way to do it. Okay. Good luck to you. Let me take another call, Franco. This is Shabra. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, let me take another yeah. call. I think we dropped this one. This is Shah. You're live in here. Hi, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, I have one question. Uh, they're planning to apply H1 for my wife. Uh -huh. uh, she's currently on her 480 and she's not working. Uh -huh. She's taking a mistake. Uh, if she applies, if we apply for H1 right now and if it gets approved, uh, can we still travel to India before uh, October or we cannot? Yes, you can. The only thing is that if you come back, uh, if you do a change of status, um, then when you come back, you might it will break that when you come back on H4. You will have to af apply for another extension to bring it from H4 to H1 after October 1st. Or but the other while, option. Uh, but, but while coming back from India, do we have to come back in H4 or H1? Well, it's recommended to come back on H1 because the problem is that you, if you come here on H4, then you have to shift it back to H1. Sometimes it will automatically shift, but most of the time it will not automatically shift. Then you will have to do an amendment or a filing of a new extension to bring the case from H4 to H1 again. So it's not recommended to travel in between. So the other option is if you travel, travel just before go and get the step of H1 and then come back on the H1. But we can come back on H1 even before October 1st? Uh, yes, 30 days before, yes. Sorry? 30 days before, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, but but is there an option to come back on H4 and later apply or tra transfer back to H1? Yeah, yeah, there is, but it's a little bit uh, tricky. You will have to re-amend the H the H1 again to move it from the H4 to H1 because right now you're doing a change of status. The best option is not to travel. The second option, if you come back, come back on H1. Okay. Uh, give me a call if you need help. I have other callers kind of waiting, so I cannot dwell too long on that. Let me take another caller, Franco, and then we will we will continue because a lot of people are waiting. This is Shapira. You live in here. Hello. 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 Oh, yes. Hi. Go uh, ahead. Thanks Hi. for helping everybody. Uh, You're welcome. And, uh, quick question. And, um, uh, my, my, brother's, well, my brother is doing second master in here in California. Um, and uh, uh, his, his wife is, uh, is an F2. She went to India uh, for some emergency. Uh, 
but she is not aware that we need to go to the um, stamping again since this guy is doing second master. Uh, but she she went twice to get an F2 again, even though we have a valid visa, and then uh, we got we got ejected. Uh, so mm-hmm. can we travel now since we have visa f- for more two years? She can c- she can come back to USA. Is it, is it fine within port of entry, or do you think something something wrong? No, oh, she had she had her visa stamp denied. That's what you're saying. What was denied? Uh, she have she got five years visa uh, F2, but uh, mm-hmm. th- this guy is doing second master. Uh, someone told that uh, she need to go for uh, interview again, which is wrong, I guess. She went again. She went mm-hmm. for twice interview. Uh, we are not aware of that. You know, we need a visa again since we have already visa in F2. So they got rejected because the countries that why you're here. Um, even though you have a visa. And second time they said, uh, why your husband do second master? Why is not coming back? And that's what they got rejected. So do you think that she can come back to uh, with the same visa, valid visa to USA or they're going to stop at part of entry, mm-hmm. ask person for her? Or? No, unless the visa F2 was cancelled on her passport, she can still use that, um, that F2 to come back. But um, once she comes here, then she can change status to F1. But right now, she won't be able to just come on F2 and go to school on F1. That will not work. She needs to come here and then do a change of status. She can still use the F2 unless they cancel it on her passport. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Bye. Good luck to you. Good luck. Let me take another caller. This is Shapira. You're live on air. Unless they cancel it on the Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, yes, you're live on air. Hey, hi. Uh, yeah, this is hi. Uh, uh, hey, I have a quick hi, question okay. on uh, 140. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, my company is applied uh, 140 and in premium passing. Uh, it's a website showing that uh, it's uh, denied, uh, but without any RFP or something. Uh, is, it, uh, is it possible to have a, a denial without RFP? Yeah, uh, I've seen it, but... Technically, if you look at the regulations, they usually have to have an RFE before they deny, unless it is a straightforward denial. But yeah, the law doesn't prevent them to deny without an RFE. But in practice, they should give you a chance to answer. Um, they might have sent an RFE and you missed it. So we need to okay. know what the reason of we need to know what the reason of the denial. Uh, we applied in February 12, and then uh, I checked in uh, February 18 or something. It was uh, just saying RFP and that it denied. It's just a matter of 10 days, that's it. No, it says RFE, but you never received the RFE? I never received the RFE. It's just directly showing in the website showing denied. But still, I didn't receive the document uh, from the USPS. So let's, we need to get we need to get the the whole details of the reason of the denial. Then you maybe you can file a motion to reopen or to reconsider, or you can just go ahead and refile the case. But uh, yeah, it is possible to deny it usually under that. Even their their regs okay. say they have to give a chance for you to answer. But unfortunately, you know, right now they're doing pretty much kind of crazy stuff and. A lot of mess, mistakes on dates, mistakes on that and that. So get the denial and then give me a call and we can analyze it further for you. What's the best solution? Okay? Okay? Good. Good. Thank you so much. Okay. Good luck to you. The, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you have more callers, Franco, but I'll take a, before I take the, the next callers, I wanted to talk a little bit about the topics we wanted to talk today. And again, the numbers are, the lines are still open, 408-912-5565. And I have Franco on the board with me, and anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only. You shouldn't act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. And this is uh, Attorney Sharp Rally. Our office is located located in Newark, close to Fremont, California, and we have also a branch in San Francisco and Washington, D.C. And we really kind of uh, thank you all for listening to the show. And I won't, I'm going to talk quickly about H-1B. H-1B is there, <laughs> is here. Uh, and uh, as you know, things are going slow with the immigration. And we have a lot of things to do to get you, especially if you're a new company, never file H-1B. You will want to be set up with a DOL, etc. It is important to contact the attorneys pretty much right away. In a couple of weeks, we will have to kind of close the door. We can take more cases. So if you want to take, you have still another couple of weeks, give us a call, 510 
0742-7425887. Check our website, attorneyonair.com, attorneyonair.com. And also, just to um, for 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 other people who need help with their single H1Bs too, we we can still help you too. So just give us a call if you're a company. Call us right away, and we will give you a company deal because uh, usually on multiple cases we we have a special deal. And also, if you need um, uh, help with uh, especially a lot of people now, what's happening? Their lawyers are kind of uh, contacting them to to upgrade their case to EB1, as we call it. But they are basically the the, the problem that we are seeing is those law firms are sending those letters to their candidates. A move to EB1, send us. They they are sending some kind of forms. But the truth is that they're not really evaluating this properly. So you might still be an EB1 even if your employer is saying, no, you are not. Because we see many of those cases. We have very, very good example. We had one from Texas. We have a couple of them all around where basically they were told there was no um, there was no chance of an EB1. But we still got it done. So call us if you want to do an EB1, 510-742-5887. And I just wanted to congratulate the team for all the success and all we have been doing. Let me take another caller, Franco. This is Sharp Ray. You're live on air. Actually, I can hear Hello. you. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. So my question is regarding uh, N-400 naturalization. So if mm -hmm. if the parents are having a green card and they apply for citizenship uh, and they have a child who is less, who is 18 years and less, right? Uh, how mm -hmm. does the child get the citizenship? So the parents are applying for, for for citizenship and the child also have a green card, right? Yes. Yeah, it's automatic. If the citizenship is, is granted before the child turns eighteen, only thing you have to do you have to do after the you take the the oath, you just apply for the passport first and in the meantime you can also apply for an N six hundred for for a certificate of citizenship for the child. But that rule only applies if you you um, the child doesn't turn 18 at the time of the ceremony. Okay. Correct. Child is just uh, 13 years old right now, so we still have five ah, more okay, years. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing to file for the child. It just it's it's automatic kind of. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good luck to you. So let me take another call of Because this is Sharp Rai. You're live in here. Hello. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we still have some some time to take some more callers. Four zero eight nine one two five five six five. Four zero eight nine one two five five six five. As I was mentioning, um, there are so many things happening right now, and many people are, are really kind of worried because, of course, um, they they're seeing things happening like really uh, in an odd way. And of uh, of course we we don't have much of a of a choice. And the problem is, uh, I apologize for that. Um, so uh, the problem that we are seeing also uh, is uh, people are are kind of panicking and they are making mistakes because they are they are doing things that are not really helpful. If you have a chance to go on EB1, there are three kinds of EB1. There's EB1A. Those people of who are um, basically of extraordinary ability. You don't really need publications, by the way, but having publications are good. But you can still, if you, are, you made a major contribution in your industry, you might qualify for EB1 without you even knowing it. So give us a call. Let us assess it for you, 510-742-5887, and we'll be glad to work on the case. Uh, like I said, there's uh, a lot of co uh, company lawyers are sending letters or emails to their candidates saying, hey, you might qualify, fill the form. But the problem is that if you go by those forms, there's a big chance you won't qualify because most people don't have those. What needs to be done is a totality of circumstance of of basically putting together a case for you. And that's what we do best. And that's a lot of people will testify to that, that we are, we are doing an excellent job when it comes to that. And of course, if you need help on EB1, A, please give us a call, 510-742-5887. Now we have EB1B. These are for, uh, by the way, EB1A doesn't require an employer. It's a self-petition. Now you have EB1B. EB1B are for people who are uh, outstanding professors um, and researchers. So 
those are the same kind of similar TV one, a, a little bit less threshold, but the most important part is that it requires an employer. So you need a university or a school or a job to, to, to basically petition for you. Now the third one which is more common for our callers and our audience is uh, EB1Cs. EB1Cs are usually attached to L1A visas. However, you don't have to be an L1A to get an EB1C. I repeat that, you don't have to be an L1A to get an EB1C. And EB1C can stand on its own. What you need to, the basic kind of quick requirements, number one, you have to be in a managerial or executive capacity in a foreign country. Uh, uh, and uh, it can be India or other country. And you have to have been there for one year in the past three years. And second, you have to be transferred here in a managerial or executive capacity. And and the other thing what, which is the most important before we, we, we even get there, the companies has to be, have to be related. Uh, there need to be a, what we call a qualifying relationship. A qualifying relationship is that we have to prove it's either a branch, a subsidiary, or a, a, uh, an affiliate. So all these elements are tricky because sometimes people get confused on them. For example, someone will own one company in, in India and one company in America, and they will consider them as affiliates. They are not, because unless they are doing business together, they might not qualify. So we need to analyze those. But a lot of people are taking advantage of that, luckily, because their companies are transferring them, or they are being transferred from there, and they don't have to wait a long in the long line of EBs, uh, for example, like EB2 or EB3, for so it is interesting and important to take a chance and look if you qualify for either EB1A, EB1B, or EB1C. And again, I think um, we have a few more minutes uh, to go. Uh, so the lines are still open, 408-912-5565. And then this is Attorney Sharp Rally, and we're live on air. Today is February 22nd, 2018. And um, I wanted to say thank you basically for listening. And we have a lot of listeners. We had a lot of callers at the beginning. So now I'm going to shift key and talk a little bit about debt settlement. Then I'll come back to immigration. Uh, debt settlement, of course, is this other area of law that we practice in. Uh, it's, it's mainly for pretty much everybody, <laughs> especially people in our community where they don't really want to file bankruptcy. Uh, bankruptcy is uh, is uh, basically kind of uh, showing you don't have any money to pay something. But when it comes to debt settlement, it's more like a hardship. That means you might have money, but you don't have that much to just spend it right and left. So what happens, we negotiate the amount that is due. For example, let's say you owe $100,000. We might be able to negotiate it to maybe $20,000. And then they forgive you the $80,000 in return for the 80, uh, for the twenty thousand dollars and that's what makes things a little bit tricky because if you don't know how to do that things are going to be um, difficult for 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 uh, most of, uh, of of you because the problem is that to negotiate with those guys it, it's it's a little it's very tricky because they will tend to ask you a lot of information and by the time you answer they will just deny you so our job is pretty much not only to negotiate but filter those documents because remember, anything you say can be used against you and you don't want to be part of that. So ladies and gentlemen, if you need help with debt settlement, give us a call, 510-742-5887. The website to check is yourdebtsettlementattorney.com, yourdebtsettlementattorney.com. I think I have another caller. Uh, Franco, let me take the other caller. This is Chaparral. You are live in here. Yeah, hi. Uh, quick hi. question. Um, hmm. My nephew actually had a H1 uh, until March of 31st next month, hmm. and hmm. he had uh, he applied for a H1 extension for another two years. Uh, hmm. Last week he got a denial for H1 extension. Uh, hmm. So just wondering, like, uh, uh, is I mean, basically, is current I-94 still valid until March 31st? That is next month. So is mm -hmm. he legally uh, allowed to stay until that, and uh, he can try for applying, uh, uh, you know, a petition to um, yes. uh, revisit this? Yes. 
and in, in his case he's lucky because he got his answer before March 31st so he's number one eligible to continue staying and number two he has a chance to refile with the same company or actually also file a transfer so depending on his situation the reason it was denied I will recommend either to refile with the same company or, or move to another company it all depends on reason so if the reason is is his own fault and he doesn't meet the requirements quote unquote, then it needs to be recrafted uh, to make it uh, in the, within the parameters of H1B. If the problem is a company, for example, let's say he was working for a company and the company has to show an entire letter and they cannot show that, then ultimately he gets a denial, it will be uh, the company's fault. So if they're going to refile it like that, it will be denied again. So it all depends on the situation, but I would recommend to refile before the March 31st and also to file a transfer if he can before March 31st and uh, whichever comes first uh, he should be able to get his extension and he doesn't have to leave the country okay because uh, as long yeah, as he so filed the case sir, before um, March 31st hello yes. go ahead. yeah go ahead I'm listening to you yeah. oh yeah okay um, so let's say like the company refiles it and uh, if that status takes like let's say two months or three months so in that case, mm -hmm. he's still valid uh, to stay here or he has to leave by March 31st and then once status comes, then only he can come back? No, he, he's eligible to stay as long as the timing is right up to 240 days. So oh, as okay. long as the case is pending for 240 uh -huh. days, he can continue even working um, and stay here. But uh, we need to also check the case because if he's eligible to do an extension because sometimes people... Uh, they know they have reached six years, they don't have an I-140, they cannot do extension, they still do it, then it becomes a problem. But if he's eligible for an extension, he should be able to do it, okay? And if he needs help, just tell Oh, yeah, he has only we'll... two years, actually, is H-1 done, sir. Okay. So under four years, then he's, he's actually fine. eligible. Yeah. yeah, then he's fine. As long as it's filed before March 31st, it reaches there, he's fine to stay, okay? All right? Okay, Good luck thank to you. you. Let me... mm -hmm. You're welcome. Let me take another call, uh, Franco. This is Shapiro, are you live on air? Hi, sir. Uh, hi. Thanks for taking my call. I have a quick question. No Let's say I have my approved I-140, uh, and that is more than a couple of years now with the company A. If I'm moving to company B, um, like company B has to uh, do the reprocess for filing uh, POM and I-140 once again, or can this I-140 can be just used, or just only priority date can be used? No, only the priority date can be used, unless an adjustment of status was filed with it, then you can transfer it under AC21. Otherwise, only thing can be used is priority date. You have to start over. You don't okay. have an And so what are the chances file, right? of uh, going into the problem, uh, like if we are restarting the POM and I-140 again? Like I'm see hearing that a lot of denial cases coming up, but uh, as per your understanding, like uh, mm. been for a long and uh, how do, those things. Well, I have not, now. I have not personal, I have not personally seen a lot of denial in my office, but yeah, definitely things are tougher now because of the new rules from Trump. There is a risk, but the the news is that if Company A maintains your I-140, you can always go back to work for Company A, and then use that I-140. But that depends how in good terms are you are with with the company, then if you can be in good terms with them, they can keep your I-140. If something goes wrong, you can always shift back to company A. But uh, as I understood, like, um, if more than six months I'm already approved, company, company cannot cancel, correct? Yeah, they cannot cancel, but um, they that doesn't mean that they can you can use it to get a green card unless you go back to them. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Fine. And cancelling is not the uh, issue quick, here. Yeah. So, quick other mm. question, like, uh, so what is the priority date? Uh, because we are hearing like March, there will be some jump. So, are you seeing uh, still kind of that kind of jump will be there in the priority dates moment? No, it didn't come. I was expecting it. I think that it already came out the the visa built in. We oh. were hoping, but we didn't see the jump. So now the only hope is to wait October and the new fiscal year. Oh, after April, oh. sometimes they start deciding, but I don't see a job. Only thing I'm hoping there will be no retrogression because some people are saying there might be a retrogression. I am not sure on oh. that, so we cannot say. But uh, mm. there will be hopefully some movement and uh, some better movement probably in October.
if there is a good move. Okay? All right. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you okay. very much. Good luck to you. This is uh, Shabra. Are you live on air? Hello? Okay, so I don't think we have any other callers right now, and I don't think we have a lot of time also to go. So I'm going to cover a little bit about about the topic we were covering at the beginning, it is, which is the H1B. But still, I think, Franco, we might have a chance for one more caller, 408-912-5565. But uh, in, let me talk a little bit about the H1B season, because this is, this is the thing that is happening right now, and a lot of people... Uh, are filing so we're expecting more than last year <laughs> I repeat that uh, we're expecting more than last year so I recommend uh, that you you make sure that um, uh, if you have a chance to file with with several uh, you got several job offers make sure that you're filing but make sure that there are consistencies between all those applications that's number one number two make sure the application is properly being done make sure you have all the documents including the end client letter and also if you are moving from one to another you cannot just change job in the middle of the game so make sure that you you don't have this problem also and again if you're a company or a single uh, person if you want to go ahead and get a a, a code from a want to move here because we've got a lot of companies moving to us now and uh, if we still have some space for some more so we'll be glad to help you let me take one caller Frank, uh, Franco and then we'll continue this is Shapra you're live in here hey Shah I just joined late uh, you may have already discussed this just wanted to no update on H4 uh, um, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't discuss it because I don't have an update it's kind of they're leaving everybody kind of suspended and now uh, I am as as kind of in the dark as you guys, but I'm trying to dig and find out, but I'm not getting any information. Ultimately, we should have gotten something this week, but nothing is coming up. So maybe no news is good news, <laughs> so let's see what happens next. But until then, no, there's nothing new except a lot of companies are fighting them, saying you sh they should not take away H4 EAD, so I'm, 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 I'm pretty much kind of counting on them to make things work. So nothing yet. Uh, I don't have it. If anybody has anything, please let me know. But I don't. I didn't see anything recently. Okay. One more quick question, if you have time. No problem. No problem. No. Go ahead quickly. Okay. Um, there is a visa called E2 visa for treaty countries. That is mm -hmm. a, not yes. a dual intent. You cannot be looking for a green card, but you can continue to start your business on those E2 visas. Yes. Okay. Well, question is, if um, I have a, a approved I-140 a couple of years and I don't see a green card coming into the pipeline soon, so can I do a E-2 visa and start my own business and once that they get current and apply for a green card, is that possibility or? Uh, kind of, but there are some, some issues in there. Maybe you should give me a call and we can discuss more in, 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 in private and then we can we can look into the options for you. But there are, there are ways to do that, but not really for if you're born in India. So that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So because then it kind of attacks the E2. But it is possible some people do that. Well, but for a not Canadian, really Canadian for like we, we have a Canadian um, citizenship yeah, but you're now, still, born you're in India. Yeah, you're still born in India. That's the problem. When it comes to the you will be considered under the Indian birth, right? So oh, really? give me a call and we can... Yeah, unfortunately, even if you become citizen, you're still under... Uh, for, for The country of birth stays the country of birth, and that's the, the, the priority date that you will get. Even for E2 visa, eh? not for green card? No, no, for E2, no. E2 you can do. I'm talking about the green card part. E2, yeah, yeah. Yes, no, I'm talking can. about E2. If I leave my job, approved I-140, and go for E2, continue to start my business and my whatever I need to do. Oh yeah, years. you can go, but they 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 have a right to deny the, the E2 because of the immigrant intent and the oh. I-214B. But oh, um, right. otherwise, no. Yes, you're free to do that. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about shifting to the green card. That's different. But yeah, you can do that. That's no problem. Actually, I have a one client who just did that a couple of months and, ago. And, so, and that so, was appro approved. E two was given to him. Yes. Even he has yes, yes, yes. But oh, that's that's a, that's, a, that's a hold on a second. But that doesn't apply to everybody. It's a case by case basis. So 
and general rule no so give me a call if you need help on that and we'll be glad sure. to guide you okay okay right, let me take you. one last call and good luck take care let me take one last caller quickly Franco this is Shapra you have an air okay I think I lost the caller so ladies and gentlemen uh, I think we have another maybe two three minutes to go so I just wanted to to say um, thank you for listening to our show it's been a long time and we are reaching the eight years of our show in a couple of months and actually, we are eight years of our show. In January, I kind of started 2010, but then we stopped a little bit and started really, really in July 2010 on the radio show. So uh, our eight-year anniversary is coming up. Eight years gone so by so fast, and so many things happened during that time. We had the the, the economy crumbling off and then coming back on track in 2010. We had uh, Obama, really, doing a lot for immigrants and now we are seeing so people were complaining at that time but now we see the difference and we also had all those great things happening at that time good good and bad of course we had unfortunately the tri valley university etc cetera, etc cetera. and but we the, the radio show stood and, and helped a lot of people so i wanted to thank the KLOK team uh, franco gwen and and uh, and brad at that time helping us a lot so I wanted to thank you all for, for always being supportive. And, um, of course, uh, most of the things I do on the radio is my opinion only. That doesn't mean it's the opinion of KLOK. But at the same time, I I wanted to thank them for supporting us. So before I, I, I pass, uh, pass the show to, to um, Amit, I just wanted to remind people if you want to file H-1B, uh, please give us a call. But anything in immigration, including marriage petitions, family petitions, you name it, H1B, L1, uh, EB1, EB2, etc. Please give us a call, 510-742-5887. And the, 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 uh, the, num uh, the website to check is attorneyonair.com or piralilaw.com. And also, if you need debt settlement, uh, you want to get rid of debts, credit cards, second mortgages, etc., etc., check yourdebtsettlementattorney.com. And you can feel free to give us a call at 510-742-5887. 510-742-5887. And again, anything I'm telling you today is educational in nature. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. Uh, our number to our, the number to our office is 510. 